Hi, Winston here. This is a follow-up on my Atlas and Map Pool guide. You can find a link to the full playlist in the description. In this video I'm going to finish what's left of the customized Atlas topic. For new players there's a lot to learn. For highly experienced players, only little. Customized Atlas is an efficient atlas that contains many locked maps. Locked as in maps that have not been entered on purpose. In that way, those locked maps do not drop. And this has the consequence that only the maps you want will drop. I'm not gonna dwell more on the basics, you can find that in a playlist. A lot of questions I've received are revolving around what does the perfect customized atlas look like? Well, that's pretty easy for me to answer. There's not one atlas to rule them all. An efficient atlas is fine-tuned to builds. And each build has preferences concerning map layouts and boss fights. And an efficient atlas is personalized to player goals, like the best XP per hour, a specific farm, defeat the highest content or complete specific league challenges, etc. etc. Not only that, the efficient atlas changes over time. For example, while running tier 8 maps, you have unlocked only one tier 8 map. But after you moved on to the red maps tier 11+, plus, you might want to complete all the tier 8 maps for the atlas bonus. So I'm not going to come up with a 3D model for the perfect atlas. There is a downside to heavy customization of your atlas. Customizing your atlas is balanced by the atlas bonus. If you skip out on completing a lot of maps, you lose big bonus percentage. The Atlas bonus is not to be underestimated. With an Atlas bonus of 125%, you can maintain a tier 12 map pool by just running them as magic. Now that's crazy stuff, considering in the past you would have to spend around 5 chaos on each map to get the same result. On the other hand, if you got insane clear speed by only running the fastest maps, you might have a higher level and a lot more wealth than other players. And at that point you do not care about the Atlas bonus since the loss of map tier is insignificant to your currency and now you can just buy all the maps you want besides not having to worry about the orcs you spent on rolling maps. So I hear you asking, how do I proceed to make my own customized atlas? Well, it more or less comes down to what maps you like to play. Usually those maps are above ground and have a layout like a bowling alley. The straightforward fast clear by bulldozing through packs of monsters. The second map factor is of course what bosses you can safely kill. Because killing bosses has become way more important than it used to be. It usually requires a high single target DPS. And that narrows down the pool of builds you can choose from. A shame, but that's how it is. So for map criteria we can use map layout, boss difficulty, map size and last not least. Monster density. Many boss fights are rock, paper, scissor when considering build versus boss mechanic. Take the Scorch map for example. A slamming giant goat might scare an invasion build, but a juggernaut with a lot of physical damage mitigation has an easy time. Another factor is the layout. Gorge has the perfect layout, straightforward, fast, clear, like a bowling alley. However, at the moment, Gorge is rather short, so you might be doing 10 short maps, but you could have done six large maps. In both scenarios you've killed the same amount of monsters, but in the case of gorges you've spent more currency on rolling maps. Now compare this gorge layout with a little bigger promenade layout for example. Promenade has its own downsides again, like a boss that can cast reflecting thorns buff. And there's a difference between map size and monster density. Yes, monster density is a big factor too, think of Dried Lake in Act 4. That's what I consider great density. Another factor lies in the all important map mod called pack size. On different maps it has a different magnitude of effect. On some maps it has a big effect and on some maps with small corridors its effect goes to waste. Take this sewer for example, not only is the maze a horror to run through, the monster spawns won't clip the walls. And then compare this to a big map like Barrows, it's a lot bigger. But the monster packs that spawn in this area are widely spread and sometimes hidden because they're burrowed underground. And that's highly disappointing. So even though the Barrows has a nice open layout if you can jump the cliffs, and it has open areas that can support big packs, but because the monsters are so widely spread, the total amount of experience and loot is rather disappointing. Use these criteria to select maps for your own customized atlas. If you are a clear speed build that doesn't want to do the hard bosses, your atlas will have very few completed red maps. Tier 10 through tier 14 will just consist out of a single shaped map each tier. Only the perfect bowling alleys, like Strand for example, are completed. I can give you the tools you need to create your own atlas. Information and experience is key here. So I'll show you three sources you can get information from and what to watch out for. Next to the Path of Excel website and Reddit there is the Path of Excel database, the Path of Excel wiki and the map spreadsheet. I put links to these websites in the description and I'll start off with the database. This site can offer you more specific information than the wiki site can. 
It's also a site where data mined info is posted. Not all information is correct or updated. Take the Mudgeyser for example, it has a deadly boss called Tunnel Trap. But the map is listed as Easy Boss Kill, and that's probably because it recently has changed. There used to be another boss, an Easy Roa. This site does have a pretty good information based concerning special boss attacks. So what to look for? Well, your alarm bell should be ringing each time you read Mortar. Mortar is a projectile attack that ends up in an explosion. The explosion is AoE damage, so when multiple are fired, their AoE can overlap and shotgun you. This is a killer, a real assassin mod. When an enemy uses a bow to shoot 10 arrows and you stand in the middle of the spray, only one of those 10 arrows will damage you. If an enemy shoots out 10 mortars and 5 will land close to you, all of those 5 will damage you with their explosion. So this is a game changer. Now look at the tier 7 map Mudgeyser. This character got a very big energy shield pool. It's around double the amount of life a normal character would have reaching this map for the first time. There is no boss room and tunnel trap the boss is on the loose and on the prowl. He can ambush you whilst hidden amongst other monsters. And if he spits a single ball at you while you're in a fight looking the other way, you can die. If he shoots three projectiles he can kill you outright. If he misses you but hits an object like a swamp tree or your own golem, you can still take damage after all since you are included in the area of effect. While starting to explore the atlas, you're still weak and this map is very very bad. It is a circle though, a heaven for clear speed. So when you're strong and the boss is no longer a big issue, this is a very good map. As long as you don't run too many crazy mods like extra projectiles of course. Another important keyword to watch out for is boss reflect. It's called thorns. Your alarm bells should also ring when you read dead on a boss attack. Thorns is a reflect mechanic that's quite capable of killing you. Another important boss mechanic is immunity. Bosses can be immune to ignite nullifying your build. Like the phoenix guardian. Or they can have faces immune to damage and hence you don't leech so you no longer can face tank them. Like the Wolf King for example. As always, knowledge is key. Do research so you know before you start in a league what maps to complete and what maps not to complete. You can remedy some mistakes or even plan to remove maps after you receive the Shaper's Orb for example. If you find a free sections and a Scour Orb, you can lock a map. If it's not shaped, you can turn it into a white locked map again. And this causes the map to no longer drop for you. Of course the colors of the sections will correspond to the color of the map you're going to use it on. To customize your atlas you need to do some research and you can basically do that right now. Copy paste the map information page from the database into a spreadsheet and add your own notes with your own experiences and edit it with information from the Path of Exile wiki page like divination cards drop locations. Eventually by usage you learn all this information by head. This is my spreadsheet after a couple hours work. I've put in some information about the map and after I ran the map in game I gave it a final score. Now important to note is that before you can shape the perfect maps you need to acquire the shaper orb. So it's good to plan this ahead. So you keep an eye out for those maps on the market and perhaps share its completion with friends. This map containing the shaper orb might be a bad map, one that does not fit your customized atlas. So after you receive the shaper orb you can lock the map again with the special fender item. There could be a reason for keeping that map that contains a shaper orb though since they can sell very good, because a lot of players might be looking for that shaper sword. Even though the excavation map has been improved, I still don't like it, but I kept it since they sold like hot cookies. In a new league it's good to give attention to popular items that are expensive, and perhaps not even for sale at all, especially the ones that can be gained by divination cards. Channel map to get humility for a six link tabula rasha. Phantasmagoria for the jackpot divination cards like Taste of Hate and tier 14 maps. You can't rely on completing the Phantasmagoria sets since the drops are very very rare. But you can sell them or buy them to complete. The map is fast enough to justify the choice. Dunes is a very good map and only a little less good than Mesa. Start leak any unique granite flask, blocking Rumi and the more melee physical roar both count for a lot. Continuing with awesome clear speed maps like Shape Beach, Tropical Iceland, Phantasmagoria and Shape version and after that Strand and if you're strong enough for Tunnel Trap and Mudgeyser and then comes Tropical Island, Coves and Colonnade or Courtyard to finish off. So a nice customized atlas would look like this. Depending on your character level I might complete more maps of the lower tiers to boost the atlas bonus of course. There's no need to invent the wheel yourself, a nice spreadsheet already exists on the web. If you plan on using a spreadsheet, copy this one and edit it with your own notes. 
and of course edit it for changes when they come along in the Power of Excel patch notes. I'll put a link in the description so you can grab this Google Docs patch sheets. Mucho credits to the creator Josh Huck. I'm going to finish off with some notes on your perfect atlas in a new league. In a new league I would backsteal by my first Sana, get her ASAP. Next I would try to complete all white maps. I would always be on the lookout to complete the first map of a higher tier, either by leeching it from friends or by the map outright. This is a continuous process, working down the list of maps from your spreadsheet. Then I would try to explore the left bottom corner of the atlas. The cluster contains Arachnitomp, Shore, Coves, Underground River, Reef, Tropical Iceland and Quay. Note, some of these maps contain dangerous bosses in combination with certain map mods. The Reef map boss throws a mortar for example, so reroll multiple projectiles. The Quay boss can be face tank, but spawns a rare monster after it dies, and this monster can be a volatile nemesis rare. But hey, I don't need to tell you, you can do all this research yourself now. This cluster of maps are all nice maps and connected. To start it off, you can buy only a few and explore the rest yourself. This does not follow my perfect atlas scenario, but start leak, it's pretty impossible to create it outright unless you're very rich. You're always limited by your own currency, and the specific maps might simply not be for sale. This cluster, however, will give you the ability to both level up and get rich. At this point of exploration, you're looking for cheap unique maps to complete as well, perhaps using teamwork. In the meanwhile, you're also completed some high maps, one of each tier, like tier 11 wastelands, and then comes estuary or shipyards, tier 13 waterways, and then comes springs, tier 15 abyss, and hopefully any guardian map, perhaps the easiest one, the minor tower. And only then, after a very long time, you can transform your atlas into the perfect clear speed XP atlas. So to do things the most efficient way, you'll have spent a lot of blood, sweat and tears, before your atlas is going to be perfect. The question you have to ask yourself, is it worth the trouble? So if you have less time, it's fine to just complete everything you can for the atlas bonus. Of course you can afford to skip a couple maps you don't like, but the majority will be completed. I had a lot of fun trying to complete everything in the Essence League, but oh my, it'll be awesome to spam those Shape Strand, Beach and Tropical Iceland maps in a sickling raid. Choices, choices, hard choices to be made. Well that was it for now, thanks for watching.